complete the session with discussion on a case study secure hash algorithm 1 Now to introduce you to the concepts of hash let's take this simple example wherein we have two entities over here over here uh, you can see that the mouse is pointing to a lot of uh, names such as sanjay ajay vijay sonali and so on and on the other end we have alphabets which we refer to as hash buckets now for a given data for a given input sanjay uh, let's try to match them to the relevant first alphabet of their particular names now sanjay can be matched to s bucket s hash bucket similarly ajay can be mapped to a hash bucket and then vijay can be mapped to b hash bucket sonali can be matched to s hash bucket and so on now the number of names could be infinite on this end but the number of hash buckets on the other end is finite so over here for this particular example we can consider that the number of possible buckets will be the number of possible alphabets that is a to z so see 26 buckets are possible on the right hand side so infinite number of input we are mapping it to finite number of hash buckets now the now let's see these points an individual record over here is mapped to one of the 26 hash buckets so given a person's name the output or the hash value is simply the first letter of the name that is what we specified in the previous um, slide uh, s is mapped to uh, s bucket and then if two names beginning with the same alphabet map to the same hash bucket then it results in a collision now if you consider the previous example we see that the name sanjay and sonali both sta start with the same alphabet hence they both are hashing to the same hash bucket in such a case we say that there is a collision that has occurred now the question arises as to why we are doing all this so let us take this uh, particular diagram in understanding why we are using hash functions and the purpose of using hash function so over here we have an input element the input element could be any file it could be a document file or it could be an image or it could be a it could be a database or anything this input file is passed on to the hash function once it it's passed on to the hash function algorithm it is converted to an output file or a output hash over here we can see that in this slide we can see that the input element is of variable size whereas the output element is output obtained will always be of fixed size now the function of the uh, the purpose of the hash function is to convert an input of variable size into an output of fixed size now the output can also be called as hash the output of a hash function algorithm is also called as hash or it can be called as hash value or it can be called as a message digest now in cryptography we have various hash algorithms now some of the algorithms that we uh, usually discuss is a secure hash algorithm and the message digest algorithm and many more algorithms still exist in the secure hash algorithm we have many flavors of it now some of the flavors are a secure hash algorithm 0 secure hash algorithm 1 and secure hash algorithm 256 and then this is 512 uh, 512 bits now next is message digest digest we have three versions of message digest one is message digest 2 and then message digest 4 and message digest 5 now we will restrict ourselves to the discussion of secure hash algorithm 1 according to your syllabus now let's see the formal definition of a hash function a hash function is a deterministic function that maps an input element from a larger infinite set 
to an output element in a much smaller set. As, as I already told, the number of names on the left hand side can be any, it is the hash values that we are mapping will always be finite. So the input element is mapped to a hash value. Hash function, as we have seen, hash function does not make use of any keys. So usually hash functions are used to speed up operations like insertion, deletion, and querying of databases. Now let's ponder about ponder on a few more features of hash. Hash function converts arbitrary length input to a fixed length output. And this entire process of conversion, we call it as hashing of data. Now usually, the hash that is obtained is much smaller than the input that is given to it. Hence, hash functions work as uh, compression functions. They reduce the length of the input data or the size of the input data to a fixed size of hash value. And the last one, the last point is, since the hash function converts the larger data into a fixed hash, we also refer to hash as a message digest or a digest. Now speaking on efficiency of operation of hash function, any hash function h with an input of x when we compute h of, h of x, it is a very fast operation as compared to our uh, regular uh, symmetry key encryptions and all. Computationally, hash functions are much faster than that of symmetric encryption. We will see this uh, as we uh, discuss further. We'll discuss this point further. Now, over here in this in this slide, let us try to understand the difference between encryption. In case of encryption, our regular let, I have taken a symmetric key encryption as this particular example. We are providing an input, and along with this input, we need to provide a key to the encryption algorithm. Once the encryption is done, we get what we call it as cipher. Now this output cipher text, I can reverse it and get back the original plain text. And the process of reversing, we call it as decryption, which takes as input the cipher text along with the key that was used for encryption as well. Now once the decryption is performed, we get back the original plain text. Now this is the process of encryption. Now let us see the process of hashing. Over here, we have an input that is given and this input is subjected to hashing process or the hash function. Once we perform the hash uh, hashing, we get a hash value and this hash value, from this hash value, you can, you can see that this hash value is in terms of alph alphabets and numbers. Now, once we obtain this hash value, it is not possible to obtain back the original plain text. It should not be possible to obtain back the original plain text. Now hence we say that hashing is one way and there is no concept of dehashing or getting back the original plain text from the hash. Now the takeaway from this slide is that encryption involves key and hashing does not involve key. And over here another takeaway is that there is a reverse process for encryption called as decryption, whereas the reverse process for hashing does not exist. We cannot have a dehashing. Now moving further, why are hash functions important? Now in cryptography, hash functions find applications in what we call as digital signatures. And also, we use it in message authentication codes and storing passwords. Now, what, what are the features or the services provided by hash functions? One of the features provided by hash function is authentication. And the second feature that could be provided by hash function is non-repudiation. But remember, hash functions cannot provide confidentiality. 
for confidentiality we need to use encryption and decryption the third okay, the third uh, property that we can uh, the third feature that we can uh, uh, obtain through hash function is um, non repudiation authentication and also data integrity data integrity is wherein we are able to prove that the message is not altered during transit or transmission of information from source to destination so moving further to our uh, cryptographic hash properties let us see the basic properties of hashing or the hash value now some of the basic properties a uh, hash should possess is it should be deterministic in nature it should be uniform fixed size non invertible collision resistant and it should exhibit avalanche effect so let us see each one of them in detail now what do we mean by deterministic pro property given a hash uh, given an input the hash function should give us an output when i provide the same input the hash function should be able to return me the same hash value now over here we have taken an instance wherein i have provided an input and all the three inputs remain same it is a fox i'm providing it to the cryptographic hash function for the first time i get the hash which starts with dpcd and then for the, for the second time when i provide the same input still i'm able to get the same digest and for the third time i'm still able to get the same digest for the when i perform the cryptographic hashing now that is for any given input it must return the same output value or the output hash now from the deterministic property let's see what we mean by uniform property uniform property refers to the fact that the input that is given all the bits of the input should influence the output not just few bits of the input input should be able to influence the hash value but all the input bits should be able to influence the output so this property we call it as uniform property of hashing over here for the first instance let's just take the first instance there are three bits over here or three characters over here all the three characters must influence the digest that is obtained or the hash value that is obtained that is what we mean by uniform property moving further let us see what we mean by fixed sized property hash function should be able to turn any arbitrary length input to a fixed sized So over here we can see it is just three character input which is giving us this particular digest now whatever be the size of the input it should be able to give me fixed sized output or the fixed sized hash now let's see further what we mean by non invertible property the non invertible property is also called as one way hash function or prime edge resistance now let's look at this example we have an input that is given to the hash function algorithm and we obtain a hash so once this hash is obtained when i give it back to the hash function when i give the hash value to the hash function algorithm i should not be able to obtain back the out Okay. Now let's see over here. Given a hash value y, it is computationally infeasible to find an input x such that h of x is y. Now over here in this second uh, figure, you can see that there is a y that is given to us. Now it should be infeasible to calculate back x from this particular uh, property. next weak collision resistance now what is collision resistance Co collision we have already uh, discussed 
uh, in the example that we have seen initially that two names will collide and make up to a same hash bucket now over here if two messages if two messages are able to give me a same hash in that case i say that there is a collision that has occurred now in hash i want a, i want a hash which is in which there won't be any sort of collision now there are two types of collision resistance properties that a hash should possess one we call it weak collision resistance property and the other one we call it as strong collision resistant property so let's see what we mean by weak collision resistant property given a input value x1 it is computationally infeasible to find another input value x2 such that both their hashes are equal okay over here in this diagram we can understand that i am given x1 and also for this x1 i know how to calculate h of x1 so let me say this is h of x1 now i need to find another in x2 which will also give me a value h of x2 which is equal to h of x1 so this calculation should not be possible according to weak collision resistant property next we have strong collision resistant property in case of strong collision res resistant property it should be computationally infeasible to find two input values x1 and x2 such that their hashes of x2 in the previous case we are given x1 and we have to find x2 and uh, in that is in the weak collision resistant property in case of strong collision resistant property we are not given either x1 or x2 our work is to find out x two strings x1 and x2 in such a way h of x1 and h of x2 match this is not uh, feasible now in such a, uh, these properties are expected from hash the last property expected from hash is an avalanche effect so what do we mean by this avalanche effect now looking at this in when we look at this figure sorry when we look at this figure over here we see that we have input and we have output in case of input we are providing four zeros in case and for the second case we are providing three zeros followed by one only one value or one bit is flipped in the second input or the second case now for these for this input when i provide it to the hash function i get this particular output for the hash value and similarly with one bit flipped when i provide this input to the hash function i get this particular output you can see that few of the bits are also inverted in the output okay now over here let us read this if a single bit in the input string that is zero is flipped to one then each the hash value is flipped with the probability roughly equal to point now the possibility of four getting flipped is 50% it could be flipped or it could not be so similarly all the bits of the output they have a probability to be flipped by 50% so we will take this example for this particular message digest that is obtained through sha1 just one bit of change in the input has resulted in so bits being flipped so all of these three values indicate that these are the 
digest values that have been fed with one bit change for the input. Moving further, let us just check the attack complexity for weak collision resistance. The question over here that arises is how long would it take to find an input X that hashes even Now, if you were to remember weak collision resistance we are given x and we need to find out another string x dash and both x and x dash is 2 raised to w now let's see how to enforce a brute force attack in order to obtain a hash value will match to the given hash value. Now we need to repeat the matching of the hash dash. Now we check whether these two match. If they do not match, we repeat the process. And again, select another random create it hash value and check if it matches. Now, if they match, we repeat the string that to any one of the it follows that the above loop you have to do to w minus one dash for x dash that case we to run the code in the name of the and that's similarly for a a group for from collision resistance of a hash function involves looping a program. Now the previous strong collision That is S, which has string and hash. First, the pair X and this hash. S and Y. Why? Right. 
and then and this w So, we're here, and I was in the diagram. During the detection, it accepts three different initialization vector and also along with that, that it accepts the entire page is divided as is back as the second input to the compression box and successive blocks of message are given as here you see this for writing B1 block to the question function and it the question it's true and that then in in utilization a vector we are using to partially hash hash one obtained from compression box For compression box, we supplying the previously calculated hash value along with the current blocks that need to be hashed. So for all the subsequent Now, this Initialization vector is of is not to five added and provide. And then the view of the the diagram that we have seen just previously. Now, the main purpose of using hash is to convert an arbitrary size input into a fixed size output. Now, 
let us try to recall the symmetric key algorithms in that we have something called as key scheduling okay for each round of the algorithm let's these are the in case of further sharp one as we have already told it makes use of 80 rounds in order to produce a at value which is of 160 now this sharp that from round 0 up to round will form a first and so staging grouping of stage The 
this or cryptographic hatch and in the cryptographic hatch What we have seen in this picture of hatching, and then we have seen various set of the cryptographic hash construction, wherein we have seen Merkle and Damgaard's compression function in order to generate a hash value. This is an iterative process that is used to generate hash. Now, based on this particular principle of Merkle and Damgaard, we started our discussion on SHA algorithm. SHA stands for Secure Hash Algorithm, which uses arbitrary size input in order to give us an output of 160-bit hash. Now, in SHA, we have seen that uh, it makes use of um, or it runs the input 80 rounds in order to obtain a hash of 160 bits. So in the subsequent class or the subsequent session, we will see exact construction, how we can relate it to the fiscal cycle. Thank you for today.